and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to make the poinsettia vase or candle holder and this is really pretty and I really like it and we don't have very many items to make it. I found a glass um, candle holder or vase at the dollar store that was a little bit heavier on the bottom and then when we're done we're going just to E6000 onto a candle base which I also picked up at the dollar store and we're going to make this poinsettia out of quick wood if any of you watched the videos last year I did this on a flower so we're basically going to do the same thing we're going to start out with a piece of wax paper and actually we don't need it just for a working space in case we make any messes or anything like that. We're not going to roll it out like we normally do with our other quick wood projects. And we're going to use our embossing powders to color it. And the embossing powders can be found at the craft store or some of the other gourd material suppliers like Blue Whale or Giraffe Laugh which is Bob and Sherry. Now, Let's start and let's put a little bit of vegetable oil on our hands and you'll need to do that once in a while when you're working with the quick wood. I'm going to use my scissors and I rubbed a little bit of quick wood on them. The next thing I'm going to tell you is to take all your jewelry off because it will stick in your jewelry. Now you can see I'm not cutting a real big slice. We're going to do a leaf at a time. So we're going to cut this apart, take off the plastic, it's real important. And what makes the quick wood work is it's two pieces of wood putty epoxy and by kneading those together that activates it. We have about 20 minutes working time on this. So we're going to just get it going which should give you plenty of time. You shouldn't have to hurry or worry if you make a mistake just pull it off and start again it's not a big deal now to do this I'm going to roll it a little bit more oblong we're going to make these a little bit more oblong and see what I mean about it getting into your rings I usually don't take mine off but I've been working with quick wood all day and this is a bigger project and I've got quick wood all inside of my rings so I should practice what I preach. I'm going to take that, I'm going to roll it, and I'm going to roll that with a little bit of a tip up here, and I'm going to come in with my finger and just push it in and pull it to a tip, and I am going to come to the next step in just a moment. I am going to be right back. We're back and first thing we're going to do is we're going to flip this over and you're going to notice that you've got your hand prints or your veins lines in there. Just leave those in there because if you look at a poinsettia, the flower actually has those. So we want to leave that. We're going to color the back this time because you are able to see the back through the glass. So we're going to color that and we're going to bring this over. Try not to lose the shape of your flower. If you do, just stop and do it again. And it's okay if you hang this down a little bit. It actually, it's, it's hard to set it past that, but if you do, you can always stick it straight wise too because you will put your candle or your base down there. Now we're going to come in with our tools and you could use anything to do this if you don't have a clay tool. And we're just going to make our veins in the flower and we're going to go back and finish coloring it. When I dip into my embossing I always pounce it off on my lid first because if you come straight over you will have a massive amount of color and won't know what to do with it. Now we're going to do our sides with the gold to give it some reflective light. So we're just going to cover that with the gold. And one thing I didn't do that I'm doing a little bit differently, and I do want to do this, so I'm going to lift this up just a tad, 
And I'm going to put some E6000 on here. And I don't know, know if it quite needs it or not, but I feel it does because we're adding the embossing color to it. If we were just putting straight quick wood on it, I would not worry about it. But because we're adding the embossing to it, I want it to be secure, so I'm going to add the E6000 onto it. And if you've ever worked with the E6000, you know it keeps the hard things hard, especially like glass and rock to, that are to glue to. It makes it glue to that. So we have our first one on. So we're going to start in our second leaf. And again, our petal, excuse me, just a small amount of your quick wood and I'm using quick wood I'm not using the copper or the silver I have done the poinsettias in the copper but the only thing with them until you're familiar with them don't use those products because they only have about five minutes workable time and your first time in until you're learning the process it's a little bit nerve-wracking now we're going to think about the circle of our flower being right in here so we want to put I'm going to shoot for seven leaves seven or five leaves around them you want to keep your leaves an odd number nature with flowers is always odd it's not even and I am while I'm thinking of it just going to put my glue on now so I don't have to do that later so I don't forget about it and it can sit there for a moment and that's fine and roll that oblong and kind of to a point push in your finger and then you get all those nice nice little veins from your handprint and those were what I was talking about and see all those little guys that look like veins and that's okay we want to keep those because that's what flowers really have in them especially poinsettias if you look at them so we're going to flip that over now and we're going to color with our embossing powder okay and we're going to put this guy on I'm going to push him again to shape him back up. And you can always smooth it out. You can use a little bit of water to help smooth it out too to get rid of if you have extreme thumbprints. And don't worry about your jar right now. You're going to make a mess on it, or your vase. You're going to make a mess, and you're going to have greasy fingerprints everywhere. We'll get those cleaned up later on. So on the sides of the petals, we're doing the reflective gold, and then right down the middle as well, we're putting the gold on as well. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of this row, and then I'm going to come back and have you join me on the second row. Alright, we've got the base of our poinsettia all done, and as you can see, we start on the outside and we work our way in. Now, another thing I did is once these were put on, I pulled them out. So it doesn't look like the poinsettia is flat, so it looks like that it's real and it's coming at you, it's more 3D. The more it dries, the easier these are to pull out and leave. At this point in time, I would actually leave it and let it set for at least 20 minutes so the last one you work on is kind of hard. We're going to pretend that that part is already done and we're going to go ahead and start on our second layer. And I have kind of found if you set your poinsettia on the side and set it between two items so it won't, won't roll on you that sometimes that is a little bit easier than trying to hold on to it so we're going to see if my quick wood is heavy enough or not and we're going to start on that second row in so we're going to do a total of three rows to our poinsettia 
we're going to remove that little plastic strip. And if you cut off too much and you knew that it was too much, just set that aside and then work it into your next go around or next leaf or petal and then you don't waste it. Sorry, wiggling on me. Now the reason we want this so dry is this next layer we're even going to have pulled out from the flowers even more are the petals. So we want to make sure that it's dry enough that we can lift it up without messing what's underneath. So we're going to start again, round it out to a ball. Don't be afraid to use a little bit more when it starts to get wet. Kind of make an oblong with a little bit of a point. Push your finger in and put your color on the back. Now I'm not going to do any more of the glue on the E6000 because we've already going to anchor into the quick wood here. So we're going to put this in. And then we're going to put our lines on the petals. So we're pushing that in. Pull that tip out. And again, while this is drying, even pull this petal out more. It'll get stiffer the drier it gets. So we're going to put that on. Make sure that you've got all of that covered up that shows. And when you do this row, you want to make it one or two petals less than the row you previously did. And you can see I started by putting them in between the petals as much as possible to start with. I'm going to put that reflective light right down the middle. Okay, now the more that dries, the more that will come out. So I'm going to go ahead and do my second row, and then we will come back and do the middle row. Okay, we finished the second row. Now when you're setting it down like this, kind of watch gravity. This guy's falling the other way, so you also can set him up. Find something to kind of prop him again. Now remember, we want to make him look like he's alive, so we want to kind of move these a little bit, keep them kind of coming forward a little bit. The more it dries, the more stiffer they become, and it's kind of a little bit easier to position them while when the then they're not wet. Now I did do something that I told you I didn't do. Because these are only anchored where the glass is and not so much on the leaf, I did go ahead and put glue, E6000, wherever there was glass and a leaf was anchored onto it. But now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do our outside green leaves, not our petals. Now the reason that we didn't put these on ahead of time was because I kind of needed to see where it needed filled in. And unless you're a little bit better planner than I am, I didn't quite know yet. So I'm going to go ahead and put these leaves in. If you look, I'm going to do, I think, one here and two on this side. Again, keeping them odd numbered makes it more appealing to the eye. So we're going to do that and do three. And I had got five in the second layer. And when we get to our top layer, we're going to do three for that middle part. Don't do two. Always end with three. So we want to make sure that we do that. Now on this guy, I want to make him a little bit longer. A little bit more narrow. So he looks like he's a different size of a leaf and I'm probably going to use a different tool. I might use a tool that's got some little points on the edge just to give it a little bit of a difference. Kind of clean that a little bit if you've got your towel handy. 
come in and clean any of that red or in gold embossing tools so it doesn't come through on the other side. Now remember the other leaves are still drying and you could let those dry before you do this. And I'm going to put my E6000 back on that area that I want to put my leaf onto. And again, I said I was going to make this a little bit more narrow. If you don't like it, roll it out again. And green this time. i got to remember it's green. And again, I'm leaving the lines in my hand there because I think it looks more like the flower. So we're doing all the back side here. And when I get ready to take him over, I'm going to pull him a little bit more. If you're having problems with the flowers holding their shape or the leaves holding their shape, make them a little bit thicker. Don't make them quite so thin. And I'm going to kind of push this guy in so that there's no line showing, open area showing between him and the flower in the vase. And again, once he starts to dry, I'm gonna pull this edge up so it doesn't look flat. He looks real, or more real anyway. And I said I was gonna use this other guy to make him a little bit different, and I didn't do it. So he kinda of has a little bit different guy. So it looks just a tad different. It gives it a different look to it. And I'm going to put the green on him. We're doing it just like we did the other inside petals. And then we'll come back with the gold here. Don't forget not to take it straight from the embossing jar to the actual leaf or petal because you'll end up with way more than you want. And that really is starting to look real cool. So remember, we're going to pull this guy out as he dries. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the two other leaves on the outside and join me back and we'll do the middle. We've let our, in our second layer dry, and then we've also done our leaves, and we've pulled them forward. And don't worry about it. If you move them and knock the embossing off, just come back and put that back on, and just keep letting that all dry. So we're going to work on our inside layer. And we talked about ending with three petals on the inside. down to our last bit here and don't forget to remove that plastic. can't tell you how many times I've gone and a student asked me what is wrong with their quick wood and I pulled out a piece of plastic. Especially when you get down to the ends and there's just a little bit of plastic. Make sure that you take it off. Now these can be a little bit smaller and I probably have too much. I'm probably going to take part of this off and keep a bit of that for my next petal. Roll that to a tip. I want to keep him a little bit shorter this time. Take a little bit less even. Bring that to a tip. Color him again. And I'm going to try and put him in between leaves again. If you squeeze these too tight and you get the tips closed up, just take your tool and open it back up. And remember, 
when you do this, you can retake it off and redo it. Now the ones that are glued down, I don't know if I would recommend that. Kind of make sure you have a pretty good grip before you set that on the glue because you don't want to change the consistency of that. We're going to kind of push that down a little bit to secure that quick wood piece. If you ever broke part of it off, just use your E6000 and glue it back together. Or if part of one came off or anything like that, it does happen. I have found that the faster you get the quick wood on an object, the more likely it is to stay stuck. The longer you wait to put it on, the bigger chance you have of it coming off. So we've got that first one there, and I just knocked my lid over with all my backup stuff, but that's okay. So we're going to start our second. Now I'm going to pick up that other little piece that I used before, and we're going to add it to this next little batch. Like I say, one of the hardest things with quick wood is cutting off a small amount. I'm going to start kneading this first, and then I'll work that other piece in. Get rid of all that marbleizing. Need it back into that other piece. And I'm probably going to be able to get both leaves or petals out of this. Bring that to a tip. Press your finger in it. Paint your back. Okay. I know it's harder to get these lines put in because you don't have a solid background. That's why you don't want to go too thin with your clay as well. Try to lift them up and bring them to life as they're drying again. And we've got one more left. The last one. Put this on here. Oops, almost forgot the back. Don't forget the back. So we ended with three petals. And color that up. At the edges. Okay, now while this is nice and soft, I want to come back, and this is where it gets tough, with a smaller piece. I should have saved enough from the bigger piece to do this, because it, getting that two-part consistency may be a little bit tricky. I just want to have enough to kind of fill in there, but I don't want anybody to see it, and we're going to put the beads on it. I'm going to try and do something a little bit different this time, too. I'm going to kind of squish it a little bit and then maybe try to dip it into the beads. These are just seed beads, so let's see how this works. 
Okay, we did get some of them. I'm going to come in here and what's left of that, the first thing I'm going to do is put the gold on so you don't see red. My hands are so red. And I'm going to take my tweezers and I want to get the edges of this, this clay covered. So I want to make sure that we get lots of beads in here for the center. And I'm going to come along the edge and I'll turn it a little bit here and have my cameraman zoom in. What I'm talking about is a little line between the clay and the petal and we want to kind of cover that up so that line doesn't show and it disappears so you don't see that middle where the beads are sitting. get this all done and don't forget to keep pulling these leaves out of this or the petals out as this part is drying also and just fill that in the best you can with solid beads I think that makes a really cool and I kind of picked the yellow because it picks up the gold I liked that. If you can see that line, you need to add a bead. If not, you are there. Okay, and like I said, don't forget to keep kind of shaping these around a little bit. And don't worry if you knock this with your finger, have a little bit of print, come in and smooth it out and put your embossing right over it. It's not a big deal at all. Just kind of keep those shaped a little bit. Now what I did at this point in time is I let it completely dry. I took a piece of paper and taped it around the sides and then I took my masking tape and where the paper didn't cover but there was a space between the glass and the um, the leaf. I came in with masking tape or you could even use painters tape and taped it all around so that none of the glass is showing because you're going to come in and spray varnish it so that embossing powder stays on and everything stays where it's supposed to. Now before you do the taping do remove your oil or your tape isn't going to uh, stick to it and I used um, some alcohol or Windex to remove that. If it's still a little bit oily, you'd use a little bit of your dish soap too and just clean that really well and get that nice clear look and then tape it off and varnish it. And you'll probably need to tape it or excuse me, clean it one more time after that. If you have any glue or any of the part that won't come off or some of your stuff, just take your little hobby knife and just remove any of that that you may need to, any little crusties, or if you got a little bit of spray varnish in the area you couldn't get the tape into, just remove that all off till you have it nice and clean. Once you have it nice and clean, go over here to your candle holder and just put E6000 onto it, and then you're going to want to set it right in the middle and let it dry and you need to let it dry for 24 hours before you mess with it and then you have your beautiful poinsettia candle holders and I think those are really pretty I know there was a little bit more work into these but I think this will be something that you will cherish or one somebody that you gave it to will cherish it year after year
So thank you for joining me. If you have any questions about this project, please email me at art at maryamjoy.com. For any of the quick wood, you can visit my website at maryamjoy.com. There is a YouTube link where it takes you to more YouTube videos as well as a Facebook link that jumps you over to Facebook where we do a lot of fun um, contests during the holidays and we try to post a different gourd picture for you every day to help encourage you. So thank you for taking time to join me today. Have a Merry Christmas. God bless.